parang nasa isip ko noon is ako yung nanay mo, magi improve ka, ako yung nanay mo, magagawa ko yan. And then, sabi niya sa akin, okay, mommy, um, yes, Pia is on the spectrum, she has autism. Good vibes, everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ina. So, for today's vlog, um, ito na po yung continuation ng vlog ko na autism assessment. Ilalagay ko po yung link dito sa taas para po dun sa mga hindi pa nakapanood. So, um, just to give you a recap, nag-stop po tayo dun sa question na kung kumuha ba kami ng second opinion after the initial assessment ng anak ko. So, right after we got the call from Dr. De Malanta's clinic, uh, pinag-usapan namin mag-asawa kung um, kukuha pa ba kami ng second opinion. Pero iisa lang yung sagot namin pareho, which is yes, let's get a second opinion. Um, kasi hindi ako na-satisfied din sa sarili ko during the first um, assessment kasi halos wala talaga akong naitanong. So, I told my husband na kapag kukuha tayo ng second opinion, um, ililista ko na lahat ng mga possible questions na may iisip ko so I can ask um, this new doctor. So, mag-jump na po tayo doon sa pagpunta namin sa clinic ni Dr. Francis ni Malanta. Um, right after the proper introduction, um, nagsimula na siya to assess my daughter. So, katulad din ng first one, tinatawag niya yung daughter ko by her name. Tapos, meron siyang mga activities or exercises na pinapagawa sa daughter ko. Almost the same yung mga exercises or activities na pinapagawa niya. Except that, ang nanotice ko, um, habang pahirap ng pahirap yung activities or yung exercise na pinapagawa niya dun sa daughter ko, napansin ko yung tone of voice ni Dr. De Malanta is becoming first. So, hindi naman galit, pero like, Fia, do this, Fia, sit down, Fia, focus. May mga ganun siya. And then, parang ako nung una na nagulat ako na parang, um, syempre, pag anak mo, naririnig mo na ibang tao yung gumagawa na ganun, parang you're uncomfortable. Um, but then, after, uh, later on, in-explain niya na, okay, mommy, the reason why I was firm kanina with her was because she is becoming manipulative. So yes, uh, meron pong tendency yung ibang bata na may autism na maging manipulative. Especially if they can see or they can feel na kayang-kaya ka nila. Di ba ganun naman yung mga ibang kids din na tipong dadaanin sa iyak? Um, but this time, iba yung pagiging manipulative ng daughter ko. So that was explained to me very well kung bakit firm yung tone ng voice niya. So assessment, assessment, question and answer kami. Almost the same questions and um na binato sa akin nung initial assessment. And then, um, dun na sa final diagnosis ni Dr. Francis de Malanta, um, he said, Okay, mommy, for now, ang diagnosis ko for your daughter is speech delay. So, nagulat ako dun sa diagnosis niya um, kasi ang sabi niya is speech delay. So, I asked him, bakit ganun, doc? Yung diagnosis po ng isang doctor is autism right away and sa U.S. Um, speech delay. So, does that mean na magkaiba yung autism and speech delay? So, in-explain niya sa akin kung bakit speech delay yung diagnosis niya. But before I, I share it to you guys, gusto ko munang mag-disclaimer na yung... Okay, hi! This is she! Kiss mommy! Kiss mommy! Kiss mommy! Very good! Okay, well, yun yung daughter ko. Um, nakita niyo bungi siya. She's already 7 years old. Um, in other aspects, like yung pagtanggal ng ipin, timely naman siya, which I will explain in my other vlogs. Ayun, bumalik na siya sa kabilang room. Um, doon na siya magpa-play and she's letting me uh, film right now. Okay, so um, to continue, um, magdi-disclaimer muna ako bago ko i-share yung um, answer ni Doc De Malanta as to why speech delay muna yung kanyang diagnosis, hindi autism right away. So, um... Gusto ko munang sabihin sa inyo na yung um, explanation ni Dr. Malanta only applies to us. It doesn't mean na pareho tayo ng sitwasyon na magiging ganun din yung magiging um, explanation niya sa inyo. Okay, so um, baka mamaya po kasi makote nyo ako na sabihin yung bakit dun sa napanood kong vlog ni Ina or ni Mami Ina is ganito yung sinabi. So, it's always case-to-case -case basis po yan. Um, yung explanation niya again is based on the totality of the assessment. Okay, so um, yung sagot niya would be, uh, sabi niya, kaya po speech delay muna kasi... Um, there is a big chance, like, uh, in span of six months na nag-therapy yung anak nyo, pwede siyang biglang magsalita. Because ang kids ay hindi pare-pareho ng rate of growth. 
yon So, minsan, meron lang talagang bata na delayed, uh, delay magsalita, or meron parang mga iba-ibang signs because they are kids. Growing stage pa yan eh. Kaya hindi agad autism yung sinabi niya. Pero, yung speech delay ng anak ko is already part of the big umbrella ng autism. Yun. So, just to give you a picture, ang autism ay isang parang big umbrella and na meron siyang mga subcomponents. So, isa dun sa mga um, characteristics niya or components niya would be um, speech delay. Meron din namang mga kids na meron social interaction problems. Meron din naman yung mga negative behaviors na may self-inflicted harm or yung mga nananakit ng iba. Pero hindi ko po gagalawin yung part na yon because that's more sensitive and I'm not knowledgeable um, about it and wala po akong experience doon. So, dito lang muna tayo sa speech delay ng anak ko and a little bit of the social interaction. So, yun yung basic na sagot niya and sabi ko, ah, okay. So, yes, tama nga naman na baka biglang magsalita yung anak ko kasi during that time, um, Pia was 2 years old and 6 months. So, speech delay muna yung diagnosis niya and hindi siya agad nag-jump to autism. Pero, um, kahit ganun yung diagnosis niya sa anak ko, meron pa rin akong mga questions na ibinato kay Dr. Francis ni Malanta. Um, tinanong ko kung is it my fault? Kasi syempre, as a mom, parang na-feel ko agad yung bigat na uh, at yung sakit kung bakit may autism yung anak ko. Parang kasalanan ko ba? Nung pinagbubuntis ko ba siya? May mali ba akong ginawa? Uminom ba ako ng mga gamot na bawal? Which I, I remember, hindi naman ako uminom ng gamot no, na bawal or mga ganon. So, andun yung una kong question about yung pagdadala ko sa kanya when I was pregnant. Ang sagot niya is, no mommy, it's not your fault. Um, wag niyo pong i-blame yung sarili niyo. It's not your fault. Meron lang talagang mga cases na biglang nagkaka-autism ang bata. Pangalawang question ko would be, is this hereditary? Ang sagot niya, yes and no. Yes because kung nasa linya ng family niyo ang merong autism, there is a big chance na ang, ang magiging anak mo is may autism din. Pero, not necessarily laging may autism ang magiging anak. Because we are a perfect example na sa linya ng relatives ng husband ko and sa amin din, wala kaming alam na merong may autism. Probably, hindi siguro na notice noon. Pero, so far, lahat ng mga relatives niya and relatives ko, wala naman kaming nagiging problema or nakikitang signs ng autism. So, um, nagsistick kami dun sa, iti, sa idea na kami yung isa sa mga example na um, walang autistic sa family pero yung anak namin has autism. And then, pangatlong tanong ko kay Dr. Malanda is, is this lifetime? What is um, the cure? Anong gagawin namin? So, dun sa part na yon medyo nagdahan-dahan si Dr. Malanda because he said, yes, autism is lifetime lifetime treatment and there is no cure. So parang ako, how is that possible na may treatment pero walang cure? So, um, syempre, tinanong ko sa kanya and then he said na you are just doing the therapy for, for the kid to be able to manage her autism habang lumalaki siya. Okay. So, nag-stop na ako doon kasi parang so far, iilan pa lang yung questions ko and I'm getting um, almost everything that I need to know. Pero marami pa akong questions, pero sabi ni Doc sa akin, nakikita ko yung listahan mo, Mami. It's a good practice na nag, um, nagdala ka ng listahan ng questions mo para hindi ka tulala pagdating dito. Um, it's a good practice, sabi niya, na nilista mo lahat ng mga concerns mo, pero hindi natin masasagot lahat yan. Um, ang i-advise ko sa iyo is to... Um, um, bring your daughter to an occupational therapist. So, meron siyang binigay na list ng, um, ng, occupa- ng uh, therapy centers. Tinanong niya kami, sabi niya sa amin, um, kung taga saan kami. And during that time, taga Quezon City kami. So, lahat ng listahan na binigay niya are centers in Quezon City. And then, sinabi niya, you need to do an ocular. And then, i-feel niyo kung saan kayo merong tipong connection or positive vibes kasi um, magiging katuwang mo tong mga taong ito, magiging katuwang natin tong mga therapist na to habang hinihintay natin makapagsalita si Pia. And that is important. So, and then after noon, tinanong pa niya ako, um, would you also want to consider this? And then meron siyang inabot na papel. Um, pagkatingin ko ng papel, it's actually a requirement on how to get a PWD ID. So, sabi niya, um, kaya ko to binibigay sa'yo, mommy, it's because, of course, I concerned din siya kasi 
sabi niya, magpapa-occupational, uh, magpapa-therapy ka ng anak mo and it's a uh, gastos. So, if you don't like to, if, if you don't like this, then that's fine. Pero syempre, ako, mas na-touch ako kesa na-offend kasi andyan na yung mga help na gusto kong tanungin sana, dumadating na, binibigay na niya yung information sa akin. So, um, tinanggap ko yung requirements, syempre. Susunod po na vlogs ko, isi-share ko din sa inyo kung paano kung kumuha ng PWD ID for my daughter. So, nagbigay din si um, Doc De Malanta ng strict na routine ng anak ko. Um, yung iPad, ganyan, is definitely babawasan as much as possible. The whole day, mga one hour lang total yung iPad. You need to have an interaction with your daughter. Yun yung sabi niya, kailangan mong kausapin ng kausapin. Um, and then, the TV also, watching TV is also lessened. Um, kung manunood siya ng um, umaga, magpa-play na kayo hanggang hapon and then ha uh, gabi, pwede siyang manood for a while before matulog. Mga ganon. And then, nagbigay din siya ng advice na by 1pm, dapat magna-nap time siya, gising siya ng 3pm. Pag hindi pa siya nakakatulog na 1pm, let's say 3pm na no more nap time. So, mga ganon, um, i-discuss ko yan isa-isa in my future vlogs. So, with all the tips, suggestions, advice, um, na binigay ni Doc De Malanta. I was very, very thankful during that time that we had the second assessment with Doc De Malanta. Um, so, um, i-discuss ko guys yung mga iba pa sa mga future vlogs ko. But for now, hanggang dito muna yung i-discuss ko. Um, pasensya na kayo. Parang biglang na-happy ako kahit medyo seryoso yung topic natin kasi pinasok ako nung anak ko. But that's basically what happened during our second assessment. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next vlog. Bye!